Hey friends, what's up? Ash here with GenSense. Hope everybody out there is having an awesome day or evening or whatever. Most of the time, I would say the overwhelming vast majority of the time, you don't need a backup bottle for any fragrance. If we're talking designers, niche, indie, doesn't matter, you don't need it. Now, of course, sometimes there are circumstances where you might want a backup bottle. Say you love a fragrance to the max, like it's your absolute perfect fragrance, then maybe some backup bottles might be warranted just in case. Or maybe there's a fragrance that you really love that's being discontinued, and so you wanna go ahead and scoop up some backup bottles, that way you have them once they all go bye-bye. Looking at you, Gucci Envy and Midnight in Paris. But outside of those circumstances, usually don't really need a backup bottle. I don't think it's really necessary at all. Today though, I'm gonna be going over with you guys 10 fragrances that I think maybe would warrant a backup bottle purchase for one reason or another. Some fragrances that smell absolutely fantastic in my opinion. So let's jump into it and check these out. Before we kick it off, a couple codes. You know the drill, GENTS10 is the code for twistedlily.com. It'll save you 10% off the entire website. Awesome place to pick up niche scents. Or you can use GENTS8 on jomashop.com for eight dollars off any order over 110. And that is a fragrance slash lot of things discounter. All right, first fragrance. Now this is actually an entire line. So I'm gonna show you one of them, but really it goes for all of them. It's from Lalique, Encre Noir. So also Encre Noir Sport and Encre Noir All Extreme. P.S. Lalique, I know you're not watching this, but if you are, uh, can I have a new Encre Noir flanker? Could you do that? That'd be cool. Or actually just some more fragrances in general because you just don't make them all that often. Okay, Lalique, you can go ahead and turn the video off now if you're watching, make believe Lalique, just, just exit out. Now, one of the best things about Lalique fragrances in general, but specifically Encre Noir, is you can get these from discounters for really, 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 really cheap. That's why you need to not be watching Lalique. I'm gonna tell people not to buy it at retail. Don't buy it at retail. It's way more expensive. But at discounters, cost next to nothing, and the quality for what you pay is amazing, in my opinion. Now, it's not a fragrance that's gonna be for everybody. It's dark, it's woody, it's not really sweet at all. It doesn't have a whole lot to counterbalance that and make it easier to appeal to uh, the masses. But if you appreciate really well done fragrances that are dark and woodsy, then you should absolutely check this one out. So why would you get a backup bottle? Well, because right now it's very inexpensive and I have seen Lalique fragrances in the past that are next to nothing at discounters eventually be discontinued and become harder to find and the price does go up. And Encre Noir being the type of scent that it is, a fragrance that's heralded in the fragrance community that would have all kinds of collectors trying to scoop it up should it be discontinued, the price is gonna skyrocket if that day ever comes. And also just because the fragrance smells friggin' awesome, that's also a reason. Fragrance two, Valentino Womo Intense. Also Dior Homme Intense. So both of those fragrances together here. So technically I've told you five fragrances and we're only on number two. Valentino Womo Intense and Dior Homme Intense are two of the best iris designer fragrances on the market period, hard stop. They are the type of iris that you'll hear described as being makeup-y or lipsticky, or some people might even say metrosexual, as if it's a Ben Affleck movie. Not counting Batman, I guess. But Valentino Womo Intense and Dior Homme Intense are absolutely amazing. They smell fantastic. What Dior has been doing lately is taking the iris and kind of plucking that from the Dior Homme line. So while Dior Homme Intense you can still find pretty easily, and they did put it into the newer bottle style. I don't know if I'm comfortable with it. You know, it makes me iffy. I feel like Dior might pull the rug out. And then the same thing with Valentino. They're concentrating on the Born in Roma line, and that's very far removed from the original Valentino Womo and Valentino Womo Intense. Would I be surprised if these fragrances are still here in five years? Honestly, yeah, but it wouldn't be completely shocking. At the same time, I love the fragrances so much that I don't really wanna take that chance. So I'll just scoop up a backup bottle and uh, call it a day. The reason I featured Valentino Womo Intense here is because I already have Dior Homme Intense backups. I don't for this. After that, Tom Ford Noir Extreme. Now to be fair here, I believe that Tom Ford Noir Extreme is the best selling in the line. So if they were gonna get rid of one, this probably wouldn't be the one to go. That said, we have seen Tom Ford fragrances in the past be unceremoniously removed, and that includes fragrances in the Tom Ford Noir line. Like this fragrance, Tom Ford Extreme, this stuff 
was fantastic and it is gone now. And I have maybe 25% of my 50 mil bottle left. So the Tom Ford Extreme is already gone. This is already discontinued. Tom Ford Noir Extreme, it wouldn't surprise me if it gets the can also at some point. It's a very unique fragrance, very well done. Of course, with it being a Tom Ford, you already know the quality there is great as far as designer fragrances go right up toward the top. And it makes use of the note of Kulfi, which everybody brings up because it's a very interesting note. Uh, pistachio ice cream sort of feeling. Now they're gonna be people like, no dude, it's not pistachio ice cream, it's completely different. Okay, 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 sorry. Let's do a Dior next, Fahrenheit. Le Parfum. So there's Fahrenheit Le Parfum and then there's Dior Homme Parfum. Both of those warrant a pickup if you're a fan of either one of those lines. Dior Homme Parfum is typically harder to find. This one, while not cheap, you can still find with regularity. I'm a big fan of Fahrenheit in general. There are only a couple flankers that I wasn't in love with, like Fahrenheit 32 didn't really do it for me, but Fahrenheit Le Parfum absolutely does. It has that Fahrenheit DNA, that sort of petrol vibe, but not as aggressive, a little bit modernized, which you would expect because it's much newer than the original Fahrenheit. And it has this great boozy sweetness that makes this one of the best classy evening fragrances that you're ever gonna smell. I know booze equals classy. It works. And that's a fragrance that I do anticipate as time goes on, it's going to be harder to find, and then it will command a premium. And it's like that with all the discontinued Fahrenheit's. You can go back and look for them, Aqua Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit Absolute, and they typically command a pretty decent premium. And this one was already more expensive to begin with, so when that day comes where it's no longer readily available, I would expect, now it's kind of a fool's errand, to try to say, oh, I think it's gonna be this much, blah, blah, blah. But I would expect that it would command probably over $200 a bottle. So that's why I wanna get a backup of that one. Next up, we got from Isimiyake, Low DC Noir Ombre. Now this one has been a little interesting because it first popped up, at least where I saw it first available, at TJ Maxx, of all places. People started to get their hands on this at TJ Maxx, and there was a big rush on them. So basically everybody ran out to their local store. They saw if they could pick this up. If it was there, they did. And the expectation at the time was, okay, the fragrance is sick. Everybody loves it. Everybody's talking about it, saying how amazing it is. And it is, by the way. This is an exquisite amber fragrance, especially when you consider it's just a, a low DC. Although I guess I shouldn't say just a low DC because Isimiyake does some great cool weather fragrances. And this is one of them. But anyway, the expectation from people was, well, I missed out on it. Everybody rushed and bought it and grabbed it. I'll just wait till it hits discounters. I'll pick it up for whatever, 60, 65, and then I'll have it. Also, I guess I should say that this is kind of like a higher end Isimiyake for whatever that's worth. It comes in a nicer presentation, a nicer box, and you can tell that they put a little more into it. But back to uh, what I was rambling about, it never really popped up at discounters. It would pop up for a second and then sell out like that. And then six months would go by, nothing. And the prices on eBay reflected that, that people wanted this, but couldn't get it. And so the prices went up. I think because I saw this at TJ Maxx and I was a moron and I didn't pick it up. I came back the next day. I've told the story before. I, I saw it at TJ Maxx, I think for like $50. And there was a really long line and I had other stuff to do. So I was like, oh, I'm sure nobody's gonna buy this. I mean, I see stuff at TJ Maxx and go back three months later and it's still there. So I figured, yeah, I'll just come back tomorrow, scoop it up. Came back the next day, it's gone. So I couldn't buy it for a while. And then eventually Fragrance Buy got it and I got it, so cool. But recently it has popped up at discounters again for like 70, 75. It's sold out at some discounters. It's still available at others. I think it's just a tester bottle, but this is the type of fragrance that you kick yourself for not picking up later on down the road. So yeah, I'm gonna get another one. And by the time you watch this, I'll already have, have bought it. So <laughs> I'm good. Now Terre d'Hermes Autre Fraiche next up. This fragrance has vanished from discounters and stores so quickly it almost made my head spin. So Autre Fraiche, in case you're unaware, is essentially a summertime version, a summerized version of Terre d'Hermes. 
where that flintiness, that earthiness, that dirtiness from Terre d'Hermes basically gets washed away. You could almost think of it as Terre d'Hermes if it were like a solid piece of matter, which is kind of weird but it's covered with bits of earth and dirt and rock. And then you get a pitcher of clean, clear water, just pour it over the top and let it rinse everything off. That's Terre de Mezzo Tree Fresh. Much easier to wear, cleaner, more approachable while maintaining that classy Terre de Mez DNA. It's really well done, but Hermes has come out with a new flanker, the new Terre de Mezzo Givre, which is very popular, at least here initially. And they've basically taken that and said, okay, cool, this is our new summer version of Terre d'Hermes, Eau Très Fraiche, hit the road. And I've seen it just drop out of stores left and right. And it's happened maybe a little bit quicker than I anticipated. And so if you really like Eau Très Fraiche, probably a good idea to, to scoop up another bottle if you wanna have a backup. I have this 75 mil bottle. Realistically, I don't think I'll go through it. So I'm still kicking around whether I'm gonna get a backup bottle. I think the fragrance warrants it, but at the same time, I have a ridiculous collection. So if I had like 20 bottles, I would buy a backup, but I have like 20 million. Then we've got Jean-Paul Gaultier Ultra Mall. This one is so weird to me because when it came out, it's like the hype on this fragrance just hit a fever pitch. It was everywhere. Everybody was talking about it. People were talking about it in videos, including myself on forums, uh, in real life. Just everybody was like, oh man, have you tried this one? So many compliments, bro. Which to be fair, it is a really good compliment pulling fragrance. My wife was obsessed with that when it came out, one of her absolute favorites. It was like Ultra Mall and Perry Ellis Oud Black Vanilla Absolute. She wanted me to wear those fragrances. Like anytime I would say, hey, what should I wear today? One of those. It's sweet, the projection is there. It has pretty good versatility as well. And yet it's one of those weird things, you know, time moves on and, and the amount of people talking about this one kind of dwindled, dwindled, dwindled. But the fragrance still works just as well today as when it came out. And with this one, I don't have a ton left about half a bottle actually. And so I wanna pick up another one uh, because I feel like it's one of those fragrances that I wanna bust out from time to time just to get transported back to when everyone was talking about it. And I do genuinely like that fragrance a lot. After that one, Ferragamo, Womo. Oh, Womo, where have you gone? I keep expecting it, you know, to have it pop off from all the stores and one day just go, oh, wait a second, it's gone. It, it's nowhere. With discontinuations, I've spoken about this, but that's how it goes a lot of times. The brands don't tell you, nobody really knows for sure, and then just one day, poof, not there. And then you have the scalpers on eBay who are, who are doing this deal. Oh, you would like that bottle that you used to be able to get for $35, $40? That'll be 250, thanks. Hate that. But Ferragamo Womo, I really love. Love the line. I mean, Signature and Womo, I like the most, but I really enjoy them. I think the bottles are cool. I love that tiramisu kind of sweet coffee feeling that they have, and they have surprisingly great performance and a mass appeal. Ferragamo, though, is going off with their new line of fragrances based around leather, and uh, I don't know. We'll see what the future holds for Ferragamo Womo. It'd be awesome if they come out with some new ones. But this one I like so much, I'd like to, Go ahead and get that back up just in case. And also the older that the fragrance gets, it takes on this really nice deeper tone. After that Prada Lome, one of the best fresh, clean, soapy fragrances on the market. I think Prada Lome is fantastic in almost any situation. It has that versatility where you don't have to worry at all. And yet I don't feel confident in the line sticking around for the long term, which is a bummer. Presentation I think is great, it's so classy. And some of the flankers that came after this were really good. It's not like they came out with flankers that were complete trash that ruined everything. Prada Lome Intense, most people would say, is the best fragrance in the entire line. Then you had Prada Lome Low and Water Splash. Maybe some people would say Water Splash was not necessary, but they took the Prada Lome DNA and freshened it up a bit, just like Terre d'Hermes Eau Très Fraiche did for that line. And yet, Prada seems to be concentrating on the Luna Rosa line and not at all on the Loam line. And we've seen that with some of the discontinuations across the Prada Loam line. So that's why I would want a backup of this one because I'm not super confident it will stick around. Although I hope it does. And to be fair, Prada Loam does still sell. 
So it's just, I don't trust Prada. Last but not least, Bulgari, Man in Black. It's similar to Spice Bomb, sure, but it still smells absolutely fantastic. The booziness in here really helps elevate the fragrance up a bit for me. That sweetness mixing together with the spices, the tobacco, everything in here. Ooh, great, great winter fragrance. First time I smelled that was in Belk, my local mall. And uh, I got it and sprayed it on a tester strip and was just blown away. Didn't care a bit about that similarity to Spice Bomb. This stuff stands alone on its own. So this is a little bit twofold here. Both uh, Bulgari, not trusting them because they have a propensity to cancel things, even things that the fragrance community loves. And also because uh, the Bulgari man line more specifically the darker fragrances in the Bulgari Man line don't seem to have much of a concentration from the house right now. I'm good. I've got a backup bottle of that already, but Bulgari Man in Black, I check up on every so often <laughs> just to see, is it still readily available? Is it still good? Bulgari has done me dirty in the past, so I'm always watching them. Talking about discontinuations, they haven't actually done me dirty. Just so somebody's not like, what do they do to you, man? Well, they, they discontinued. Uh, a couple fragrances. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. Some fragrances that I think, personally, backup bottles are warranted for, and some of these I already have the backup bottles, so <laughs> like half these I'm already good on. All right, guys, I'm gonna take off out of here. Let me know in the comments below fragrances that you yourself either have backup bottles of or ones that you need to get backup bottles of, and let me know why. Thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.